Thanks for inviting Sparta to speak at the C&D World 2021 show. We'll be focusing on technologies and trends in the industry today. C&D recycling goals, really always the same. Crank up recovery and diversion, increase production and slash headcount to the extent viable. C&D recycling has clearly come a long way. You see on the left, the early days of ground sorting, then evolved into mobile equipment being used, then single lines, and now we're seeing much more sophisticated lines with even robots on some of them. We're first gonna be focusing on incremental trends before we get to the exciting breakthrough technologies. Everything at one stage though was unproven. And the following questions are questions that C&D recyclers used to ask, but don't ask anymore. Will magnets pay for themselves? Always, every time. Wherever the burden depth is reasonable and the top size is controlled, the payback is compelling. Do low and metered feed make a difference? No question about it. Look at the left slide and the right slide. Blindly feeding into one, seeing everything going into two. Apron feeders can mechanically meter the feed after you've spread the material out and see everything that goes in with whether you're feeding a shredder or a C&D line, always a valuable way to do it. Is longer better? Well, in C&D recycling, absolutely the case. More sort line length means more opportunity for more recyclables to be picked and stored. We're also seeing the clearances under the sort lines get higher because storage capacity makes a big difference. How about front end shredding? Is it worth it? Does it pay for itself? Well, in the big operations, absolutely, because uptime is critical, flow is critical, and being able to uniformly feed material downstream for sorters to deal with makes all the difference in the world and sends more to the mechanized beeline for more mechanical processing. Which would you rather deal with, left photo or right? How about splitting the flow? Good idea to send everything on a single line or better idea to split it between large material on the A line and middle sized material on the B line. As you can see in these slides with a B line material, a magnet and air separator all day long are able to capture valuable materials that are quite hard for sorters on a line to efficiently grab. Air separators are becoming a staple in C&D recycling systems. When you look at the photo on the right, you realize that otherwise, much of the aggregates that are small and medium size could be missed. But with an air separator, all day long they're capturing it with one QC sorter able to remove whatever's heavy, but not aggregates, which in some cases is able to recover valuable copper and brass, as well as removing contaminants so that clean aggregate can drop into the bunker below. And the beeline magnet whether a cross belt or in line, keeps paying out. We have one customer who fondly refers to it as his slot machine, and every time we walk by it, says to himself, cha-ching, cha-ching, and there's no doubt about that. Is it a good idea to have a dedicated wood collection conveyor below the sort line? Absolutely. As you see in the sort line with the drop shoots on the left, every sorter is able to pick their designated product as well as wood. So every sorter is doing double duty and with all the wood that's in these lines, it's a great way to maximize recovery of the wood, drop onto the collection conveyor below, which then feeds either a high-speed grinder or a bunker for shipping out as is or grinding elsewhere. Another trend we're seeing is screening finer. Here we're seeing 3 8 minus fines, which is a far cry from the early days of two inch minus. The interesting thing about it is it's not because they have to, but largely it's driven because they can capture aggregates with their air separator and get paid for this product instead of paying to get rid of it. Now we're gonna have a look at newer technologies and questions that C&D recyclers are asking today. What's a carbonizer and what's biochar anyway? Here we're seeing C&D wood picked from C&D recycling lines, 
but instead of feeding it into a high-speed grinder to turn into mulch or some kind of fuel, they're feeding it into a carbonizing machine, which turns it into biochar, a valuable end-use product, and re most importantly reduces it by over 90%, which really takes out some of the uncertainties of outbound wood markets. So it's something we're beginning to see in select markets and something to keep your eye out for. Is there a better way? We're looking at A-line material traveling down a sort line. And this is what we've all seen for many years. And we've all sort of shook our heads and said, well, how the hell else would you do it? Now, there indeed is a different and better way. We're seeing sorters on the left here, all undoubtedly wondering, why the hell can't we get better material to sort? And on the right, well, now you can. With a ballistic separator, which we'll see uh, in a slide or two after, it's able to basically separate that large material pile into these two different streams. The left one being the primary one with most of the good material. Some of you may know ballistic separators from single stream operations, but this Comtech Ballastor unit is quite a different animal and quite a beast. 20 feet long, 14 feet wide, 10 paddles, all of which are moving aggressively up and down, carrying 2D or flat material forward. It stays on the paddles and allowing the rollable shape material to go backwards. So we'll soon see in some slides what that looks like. And then, of course, what's less than five inch minus goes through the holes in the paddles. So it's separating big from small, like we've seen so far, but then doing something extremely different, which we'll see on the next slides. Here's the process. Starts out on the left, big tip material goes into a shredder, volume reduced to around 24 inch minus, drops onto a vibe pan feeder, 10 feet wide, shakes, spreads the stuff out, and then drops onto the 14 foot wide Comtech ballast ore unit that we talked about before. And the next slides, we'll see the job it's doing. And here's the job that it does. So we all know big primary screens, which separate big stuff from small stuff and then feed traditional A and B lines. This adds another dimension. It's able to remove the fines like we're accustomed to. So it's taking a five inch cut, which you see on the left, and then it's splitting the oversize uniquely into two streams. The rightmost one shows the 2D or the flat, which tends to have a lot of the film and a lot of the debris in it, which you don't really want anyway, and is valuable to keep out from the stuff you do want which is shown in the middle picture, where you see the 3D or the rollable shaped material, which has the wood and the metals and the aggregates, the rigid plastics, and really the majority of the materials of value. So here the ballistic separator has sent the 2D one way, and this is after two people have picked off whatever has value, say OCC, uh, non-ferrous metals, leaving the majority of the trash to come off the line. So on these other lines, look at that pile on the left and realize that a lot of that shit is in the pile on the sort line that the guys are having to try to get through to pick the good stuff. Well, now they don't have to. So if you're wondering why this metals pile looks so damn good, it's because this inline electromagnets positioned prior to the 3D sort line. So it's after the ballistic separator which has worked the material and of course removed the film and the trash and the shit that normally wants to stick to metals. So the action and the 2D material removed makes this a very valuable pile that sorters don't have to bother with. After the large ferrous metal is removed by the magnet, here's the balance of the 3D material after the ballistic separator, containing the majority of the good materials. So you've got all the wood, the aggregates and the rigid plastics now traveling to the 3D sort line where a small number of sorters can very efficiently remove the valuable materials. These combination of technology trends are making C&D recyclers more efficient, productive, and profitable. For more questions, 
please catch up with Rutger, who's here and eager to talk with you. Thanks, and sorry to not be with you. Take care.